Hi everyone, it's MJ, the fellow actuary, and in this video, we're gonna be talking about how AI might make money irrelevant. So I haven't made a video on this channel in a long time. In fact, I actually set up this whole thing to record a quick little greeting for a subscriber who's getting married in a few days. And I thought, you know, I've got the, well, when I say set up, I've literally just got the app open that records videos. Like, why don't we make a video for, for this channel? Because as some of you know, I've been making a whole bunch of videos for another channel of mine, which is called Bible Intelligence by MJ. And we just hit 100,000 subscribers there. And it's a channel where I've been using artificial intelligence to just learn and teach people about the Bible. And there's some really, really cool stuff there. So go check it, check it out if you haven't already. But I thought, let me maybe talk a little bit more about AI on this channel. Um, I know we've talked about it before, but I've been now playing with AI for the past six months. So it's really, well, for one, it's, it's really scary seeing how quickly this thing is progressing. And why I say scary, it's because it's kind of making me a little bit irrelevant. And I guess a lot of us have this feeling that our jobs are kind of at risk from, from an AI's point of view. And collectively, I think that's a good thing. I actually don't think jobs are good. You know, they're, I mean, jobs are tasks that people don't want to do and have to be reimbursed to do. I mean, if jobs were always fun and always grand, then there wouldn't be a salary to entice us to do it. So yes, I know some jobs are great and, and meaningful, but for the large extent of it, we all have certain parts of our jobs that we don't enjoy. So I think it's a good thing that AI is going to destroy jobs. And what I'm saying is that in the future, maybe that's for time for another video or you know, who knows, we might go for a long one on this one. We can talk about what are humans going to do once the AI is doing all of the jobs. And I guess it's connected to this video where I want to talk about how money is going to become irrelevant thanks to, to AI. Um, I mean, just the thing with, with jobs before we move on to money, and this is where I'm quite glad that I'm being a little bit more of an entrepreneur and a consultant or or working for my own time and that it's a potential risk for for those of you who who may find yourself as employees is that as the ai technology improves more is actually going to be expected of you so your output at work is expected to increase as the ai technology um, improves now, that's going to be a bad thing because as your output becomes more and more you know, efficient and you get more stuff done, companies aren't going to be needing as many employees as they needed before, and therefore, they are going to be layoffs. And when they come to the layoffs, they're not just going to say, oh, we're going to fire, let's say it's a team of 10 and you know, AI has doubled the workload or doubled the, the work output. They're not going to just say, oh, we're going to fire five and keep five. They might play a game and say, hey, which five of you needs this job the most or is the most desperate for the salary? And so you might find that not only does your work double, but the amount that you're getting paid or compensated for is going to reduce as now you have 10 people fighting over these five jobs and you know supply and demand. Some people are gonna come in and say, you know what, I'll work for a lower amount just to kind of keep that, that salary paycheck coming in. And I think that's gonna be you know, while AI is destroying jobs, and as we're going to talk about in this video, destroying money, like I say, the end goal, the end is going to be a utopia, a paradise, it's going to be lovely and beneficial for all mankind. But the road that we're going to take to get there, it's going to be a little bit bumpy, some people are going to be left behind, and it's going to be, yeah, like I say, a bumpy, bumpy road. So it's worth thinking about this, being mindful, and especially as an actuary, you know, thinking long ahead, thinking of the risks that lie before us. And we want to just think about risks, not just market credit, mortality, um, operational, but also systemic risks that face, you know, society and ourselves. So if you are working for a company, um, maybe the best thing to do is to stay on on top of the AI trends so that if they do start laying off people, they're not going to lay off the person who knows how to use the AI. And that's why I think being an AI handler is one of the best things you can do. And the way I like to learn is by playing with the technology. I believe technology tends to be a toy before it's a tool. And that's the best way to learn something is to treat it as a toy 
before you can use it effectively as a tool. So if you haven't got on ChatGPT, if you haven't got on MidJourney, if you haven't started using Eleven Labs, if you haven't started using Kyber, you know, there's a whole bunch of these things. I really want to urge all of my subscribers, all of the actories out there to start learning the technology and try and see like, hey, Get ChatGPT to write some R scripts, see if it can assist you in building a model, see if you can even use it to develop a model from, from scratch because, like I say, that's where the future is, is heading. So with all that said, and the fact that jobs are becoming irrelevant, um, I think money is also going to become irrelevant. Now, I've said this in a few of my other videos before, so if you've heard the story before, feel free to maybe skip a minute or two ahead. but. The way I see money is it's not this, you know, mathematical financial thing that needs a formula and there's the different currencies. No, instead, I see money very much as a social tool to help us keep track of who in our society needs to be reimbursed and rewarded for the contribution that they've made. Of course, that's that's how money should be with inheritance and other shady deals. Um, that meanings become a little bit distorted and money's now become a, a symbol of power. Hence, because of this perversion of money from its true intent, I feel like in an AI future, we are going to get rid of it and replace it with a better system. We're gonna chat about that better system. But let's maybe go you know, all the way back to the beginning of, of time or beginning of, of civilization and anthropologists seem to suggest with the latest research that there wasn't necessarily a lot of bartering um, within communities. Bartering happened amongst communities, but within communities, there was this IOU system. So somebody fetched water today, they could share in the hunt tomorrow, and then someone who shared in the hunt today might build houses for the people tomorrow. You know, there was a little bit of a you know, you don't have to meet the demand and have that double want at that specific uh, moment in time. It was kind of like, okay, as long as you're pulling your weight in society, you can enjoy the benefits of society. So we relied on our memory. Of course, communities started fighting with each other or challenging each other for sacred resources, access to water, land, all these kind of things. And so the bigger your society, not only the more protected you were, but the more likely you were to take over another society. So societies had an incentive to get big, very, very big. But the human mind is limited from a memory point of view. We now really start to struggle to remember who's done what once we start hitting you know, people groups of 100, 1,000, or maybe even more. And this is where tokens were introduced. The first were, you know, seashells, but you didn't want a kid to walk on the beach and become a millionaire. Instead, you wanted a token that was quite difficult to extract. And this is where gold and precious metals were a perfect candidate because the amount of effort it takes to extract that from the earth is kind of like the same amount of effort that you would have needed to have done to benefit the society in a meaningful manner. And what was quite interesting with the, the tokens or the gold tokens is how they started getting minted in religious um, religious temples, specifically the Romans. The Romans started minting these tokens in religious temples. And it's fascinating because in America now, you know, on the dollar greenback, they say, in God we trust. And the Roman coins, they started writing their Roman goddess's name on whose temple they were minting it in. And her name was Monita. In fact, that's the etymology of how we even get the word money is coming from Monita. And Monita, of course, was the Roman goddess of memory. So we're seeing right from the get go that money was used as a memory device to see who had, like I say, contributed to society. So therefore, who could you know, reap the benefits of, of society. Of course, as time went on and economic theory started to develop, money got redefined as you know a store of value and you know a value of exchange and and these other kind of things. And we started developing the time value of money and financial formulas and and that kind of stuff. And like I say, with inheritance and monetary policy, um, it started taking on a different act of itself. And like I say, 
I think one of the, the shortcomings of that is that it led to widespread inequality because now people aren't all born equal. Some of us are born with parents who are in a wealthier position than others, and that tends to you know gradually, sometimes even exponentially, increase. And so we have this widening of the gap between, let's say, people at birth based on who their parents were. And so for a society that strives towards equality and fairness, our monetary system kind of hinders that from from the very get-go. So when it comes to AI, I think we're going to have a a better solution. Now, of course, I don't think we're just immediately going to get there. I think money is going to slowly evaporate or turn into some sort of gas and then ultimately disappear. I mean, already we're seeing money going from, you know, a solid like coins and notes and physical things that you can touch to more of a liquid in the sense that you know we talk about cash flows now and money's becoming very digital and we've got an income stream and you know money's starting to become paid not only just monthly with our expenses such as Netflix subscriptions and all these other things but soon we're going to see those pa- those like yeah the time between the payment dates is going to become shorter and shorter and shorter so now we've got monthly it could become weekly it could become daily it could become instantaneous and I think we're going to reach a part of our future where when you're earning money you're going to have this positive income stream and all your expenses can be expressed as an outward stream and at any given moment you can see if you're making more money or less money based on the instantaneous rates of change of your bank balance like I say this is probably a couple years away but we're going to see money becoming very much like a form of of liquid and that's just because you know we really are taking the time value of money into to consideration but ultimately, I think it's going to disappear. Now, the first technology that's kind of laying down the groundworks for this is blockchain. What I think is beautiful about blockchain is it's a mutable property and it's just, you know, this general ledger, the single source of trust, and it's an ultimate memory tool. I mean, if you look at the blockchain, you can see where a coin has gone, what address has this bumped through, and you can see this for all the tokens, all the Bitcoin out there, you know, even Ethereum and, and you know, Polygon Matic and the other ones out there as well, is blockchain has come with a beautiful way to track memory. And I think that's where it's it's really gonna you know come in on on its own and we are gonna see money start changing and shifting towards the blockchain but ultimately we're gonna have a situation where AI is gonna be doing all of our jobs um, all the nasty ones all the ones that no one wants to do like just just like how AI has dominated the game of chess we still play chess because we enjoy it so there will still be some jobs that we will do well, when I say jobs there will still be some functions of society that we'll do purely because we enjoy it maybe making music maybe cooking um you know maybe helping someone uh, just from that own intrinsic value that it gives us a sense of of purpose and meaning and i think meaning and purpose are going to be huge huge commodities in in the future um i mean nihilism has failed society and we are going to see a huge return back to back to religions because of this very thing that they provide us with is purpose and meaning and especially a lot of people get that from their jobs that the AI is now going to like I said I don't want to say take away because you can still do the job it's going to take away the compensation for doing the job so you can still go and do everything you're just not going to be compensated for doing it and we can either have a future where there'll be this universal basic income where everybody gets paid a specific amount and it's up to us to determine how we distribute it but why I think that we're going to even skip that completely is because the AI will be in a better position than ourselves to determine how we should spend our money or our allocation of resources for our society. Also, with AI, we're going to increase our efficiency, you know, tenfold, if not even more. So we're going to enter this era of abundance. And so they won't actually really be this too much of a need of oh I want this but I can't afford it because everything will effectively become a lot cheaper um land maybe not so much land land is an interesting one just in the sense that it's so non-fungible and people might you know we'll have to figure out another way on how to transfer property or reallocate property um but that's another 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 can of worms for for another day but i think just in general we're going to live in a society in the future where you're going to wake up and yeah the ai will know that okay this person needs so many nutrients so much water so much food so much entertainment so much 
you know, relaxation, um, all these different type of things. And you'll ask the AI, say, hey, I want to watch Netflix. And the AI will be like, of course, uh, you know, you can watch your Netflix, but let's say you spend the whole day watching Netflix. The AI might say, mm, you know, stop being a sloth and maybe go to the gym. Um, you know, from a health point of view, the best thing to do is to start exercising now. And you'll go to the gym and like I say, there won't necessarily be a membership fee. There might be something where, you know, I mean, even now there's some gyms that are better than other gyms and we might get categorized until we've reached a future where everything's complete abundance. Like I said, it's gonna be this gradual thing. We might get to a stage where the AI will say, okay, listen, you can have the nice gym if the other person who doesn't get the nice gym gets the more comfortable transport or the person who gets more comfortable transport might get less of some other other goods so there might be a little bit of trade-offs in that regard so there's not going to be one person who's just getting the best of everything but the ai will determine who is worthy just like how back like i say i think we're going to return to to the roots like just how we were in this little civilization back in the day where you've got to enjoy the the meat of the hunt if you brought water the day before or if you're you know likely to build a house tomorrow because you're going to be contributing in some sort of way you know you can enjoy in the spoils um i think we're going to get a blend of a situation where like i say some of the people who are still contributing in some sort of way might be allocated a little bit more or we might get to a situation where saying hey humans aren't contributing anything the ai is doing everything we haven't reached max abundance yet so while we're doing that there'll be a little bit of rationing but rationing in a sense where you know people who enjoy gymming get the best gym membership people who enjoy comfortable transport get the best comfortable one and the ai fairly allocates it across and because it's the ai it's going to be able to to do this allocation in a non-biased way and if we can get this you know artificial general intelligence system up front where it knows what's best for everyone it knows what resources are available for everyone it knows how to put in certain safeguards um to prevent people from abusing and you know the what's this with the whole dilemma of the common good you know if there's if it, if it has those ways on how to prevent it which i'm assuming it's going to because hey it's ai so indulging in this fantasy is the assumption that the ai would be able to solve all of the problems that we have we are going to get into the situation where, okay, if resource allocation has been perfected, why do we still need money? And that's why I believe that, yes, it will still be tracked what we do. There will still be a system of memory. The AI might watch what we do, see how much of a good person we are. You know, if we commit a crime, you know, certain privileges might be, might be revoked. Um, I mean, I'm not a big fan of the whole prison system. I think that's completely inhumane, although it could be going completely off topic. That's another can of worms. Um, you know, maybe you commit a crime and certain privileges get e eroked for a certain amount of time. After you've done a rehabilitation, they get reinstated. Um, and of course, the more severe the crime, the more severe the revoking. And, you know, there will still be some crimes that society will still have prisons, um, unfortunately, for just, you know, for the benefit of, of everybody else. Um, but yeah, we will have a memory tracking system, but it won't need to be tokenized. We won't have to actually quantify it because I think that was the big thing with money is it brought this idea of quantification to the value that we contributed to society. And the idea that, like I said, back in the beginning, I brought water, you did the hunt, other person builds a house. In those, we've got three different deeds, house building, fetching water, hunting and we haven't quantified the value of either of them it's just like if you if you you know act um, participated you get to you know share in the spoils of of all three of them but when we introduced a token system we might have said oh fetching water is only worth one token the hunt is worth five tokens and building a house is now 10 tokens and what essentially you've done is you've introduced this quantification of of value how is that determined this is where economists scratch their head because 
as many formulas and theories that we come up with, there seems to be irrational pricing um, that we tend to see. I mean, just think of luxury watches, for example. The higher their price, the more they're in demand because now they're used not just to tell the time, but to signal one's worth, value, and status in a society, and that can be kind of priceless. Um, I'm looking at you, Rolex, in, in that regard. So what I think is going to happen with the AI is we're going to we're going to break away from that quantifying of, of value. And that, I think, is going to bring us back to more of a fair system because there are some people... Oh, my thing was turning off there. Maybe this video is going on for a little bit too long. Um, there are some people who are able to... I don't want to say contribute. I guess you could say contribute more because we are quantifying with the monetary amount. There are people who make more money than other people. And then, like I say, their offspring are in a much better position, starting position than other people's offspring. And should our position in life be determined by our parents, you know, or should it be determined more by our own efforts? Um, you know, this whole philosophical and social view with regards to, to that. And I think, like I say, we could have a system where the AI is like, okay, you're a healthy person, you've got a high IQ, um, you know, you've come from a privileged background, a lot more is expected from you in order to maintain your privileges and allocation of the resources than, say, somebody who might have been born with a health issue or a disability of, of some sense. And I think the AI will create a society that is a lot more fair and in doing so, it's not going to need quantification of value because, again, it doesn't need quantification of value. Another reason why we're going to see money evaporate and basically become irrelevant. Um, I have been talking for over 20 minutes, so maybe let me wrap up this video over here. But keen to hear your guys' thoughts. Let me know if you think I'm completely on the wrong path. Maybe AI is the Terminator. It's going to destroy us. We're going to go into a Mad Max kind of situation. Or if you think, no, even once we do reach utopia and we do reach an, uh, a general insurance, uh, general insurance, a general intelligence, you can see a little Freudian slip there of the actuary in me. Um, even once we do reach this level of technology, money is going to maintain its place just because it's so embedded in the psyche of the collective and it's going to be really difficult for us to to get over that um so yeah looking forward to your guys thoughts and discussions down in the comment section below and like i said apologies for taking so long to to make another video um i hope you've all been well cheers